guys, this is part two of our sex coach bay of the week. So we're gonna go ahead and get back into our question. The next question is from a male, and he says, new partners, what's too much or not enough the first time having sex with someone? It's all about what your comfort level is. Like, I wouldn't say, like, there are probably people that say I'm not going to get 100% my first time because I'm not trying to let all my tricks out the bed. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to give them everything the first time. And you know what, that's okay because... It's all about your comfort level with your partner. If you are with somebody for the first time, it's perfectly fine to do a missionary or riding and, and not have world sex. It, people have incremental stages about what they're comfortable with. So if you are balls to the walls your first time and you want to see what this person can bring to the table off the bat, as long as you're safe, go with it. Otherwise, it's, it's what your comfort, comfort level is. I think that people are fearful of judgment. So if it's like, oh, I saw this dick the first time I met him. Oh my right. God, what is he going to think of me? Why do you care? Well, you got to also think about it um, because a lot of times when you do date people or if you have friends, a lot of men do a lot of talking with their homeboys or their best friend that's a woman. Women look at it like, well, if my friend is talking about this girl in this manner or there, these group of guys are talking about this woman and how she did this or how she did that and I would never want to marry someone like that. It tends to get into a woman's head like, well, maybe I shouldn't do this or that because of those type of situations. So how can we, as women, kind of move on from that stigma? It's called own your sexuality. It's why should one person's opinion of you matter so much that you're going to change your entire direction in life? It's... I had I have a website and on the blog there's a conversation between a, a, a friend of mine and it's it was all about what is a hoe right so he has this arbitrary number in his head that if you have as a woman have slept with X amount of people that you are a hoe. What's I'm the like, number? I, I have no idea. Three, oh. three for his number. I, I, that's what we talk about. I'm like, what is the number? And he, his his conversation is like. What difference does it make? Because if she comes to you and she's sexually satisfying you and all the things that she has learned upon coming to you has built her up to this person, why does that make her a hoe? But he's so old school in his thinking that there is a number where there's a cutoff. Whatever number that is, I'm not quite sure. But as the woman that could potentially be dating this man, if you have... If you're uncomfortable with who I have been, then you're not the person for me. So do you think that numbers should be disclosed, withhold, or I'm sorry, disclosed um, when you're first dating? Like those first conversations? No. Or it shouldn't matter? It, it, it Honestly, it shouldn't matter because if that person believes, like my friend does, that there is a specific number that is intact, if you violate that number, then no matter what you do, it's it's not going to be satisfying for him. So at the end of the day, I wouldn't disclose a specific number to a person. All I can do is say is that, you know, my experiences over the course of time have led me here. And this is who I am to you at this moment. If you like it, great. If you don't, move on to the next. <laughs> Question is from a male. It says, what should you do if your partner doesn't excite you in ways they used to? I would ask, what did they used to do that excited you that they're no longer doing? And try to figure out how to get them either back to the place where the excitement was happening or figure out how to compensate for it based on current circumstances. You know, it's, it's very hard. Like, there are... The definition of a sexless marriage is less than four times a year. Four times of sexual encounters a year. If you are married and once a quarter, once every three months you have sex with your husband, you are in a sexless relationship. If you were dating before the kids, before life, before all that other stuff, and you guys were intimate and strong and heavy, 
that you can get back to that place. But you have to be committed to doing it. You have to be proactive about it. You have to be aware of it. And if you just kind of let life go by, it'll go by and sex will become a, a afterthought. It'll become something that you do just for the sake of doing it, which is terrible. Sex is really one of the few life pleasures that we get to do just for fun. And people do not take advantage of it often enough. I, I cannot imagine being married to somebody for years and not being physically intimate. What are some like maybe like exercises or things that can bring these the couples together? Touch is the the biggest thing. Communication. I, I I retract that. Communication is the biggest thing, and after communication is touch because if you are unaware of the things that a person is interested in. So for instance, if you are with a partner who gravitates to uh, soft talk, like, baby, I love you, coddling, touching, like intimate stuff, but you don't give that to them, you're not going to put them in a position to want to be intimate with you. So if you have to be cognizant of your, your partner and what they desire and be willing to concede to that at times. A lot of times people get selfish and they just get stuck in their ways. If you want to build a better relationship, it's compromise and it's listening and it's being a good partner. It's, it's really about being a good partner. Hello everyone, I am Shanae Jones with KNKY, which stands for Know the New Kinky You, and you're watching Arabia Ask You. The next question is from a female. Um, best ways to control gag reflex? <laughs> empty stomach <laughs> so the, the part about gag reflexes is that you, most people there there are people that don't have them I have a girlfriend who's a speech pathologist and she had a, a client Mrs. Dickhouse I swear to god this was a woman named Dickhouse and she did not have a gag reflex in fact it's probably most every man's dream Crazy. thing is that they have penis down her throat as far as they went and there's no problem. That does not work for most women. So m women typically have to be relaxed. And women, women are um, in that position where they have a penis in their mouth. They're worried about vomiting. So if you have a clean stomach, that takes that away. But if you're also relaxed... And angling is also very important because angling. angling with your your angle of your throat because if you are coming straight on then the potential to so angle angle the oh. angle angling <laughs> the angle of the I'm the, thinking the, of exercise <laughs> right so it's the angle so you know if you're coming straight on the 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 penis is hitting you right in the back of your throat so if you kind of lift up and open up your throat where it's gliding in a little bit more easily and going straight down into your throat, then you can eliminate the gag reflex. This from a male. I'm sorry, this is actually the last question. Okay. And it says, what's the benefit to, oh, no, actually, I, I guess I asked you all the questions. You did. I did. Oh my gosh. I asked you all of the questions from my viewers. So if people wanted to reach you, if they wanted you to help them with their relationship or maybe even have you speak on one of their panels um how can they reach you i thus i i was able to capitalize on the social media uh i'm really terrible at social media but i've done it it's at do you d-o-y-o-u-k-n-k-y -K -K that's across uh social instagram facebook twitter youtube i think that's might be about it okay. um so and i have a website it's I don't even know if they do www, but at this, it's dukny.com. Um, so all of those mediums are a way to reach me. And I'm actually offering, as part of my certification pro program, um, free sessions to uh, a, a male, a female, and a couple. So that I can do a video, video to private, videotaped uh, session for the certification program. And what would the um, session consist of? consist of it would basically be somebody coming to so we would do a couple things so I have some documents that would explain the the process but the session would be after a an assessment of your sexual history and what your concern is so that we can work together to develop a action plan to get you to your goals so 
you know, what I mentioned earlier with my 20 year uh, experience in DC government is a lot to do with project management. And what that does is help me uh, do some uh, problem analysis and then create a plan to get us to the end of our project scope delivery. So the skills are very transferable. So if you have a concern, so if you go back to the websites, there are very specific male, female, and couple concerns. Body dysphoria is an issue that both men and women have. They right. can they can see themselves and like I'm not sexy enough, and I don't feel comfortable with my body. And you know, there are ways that if you aren't comfortable with your body, you can work out. You might need an accountability partner, or you could just say, you know, fuck it, I'm sexy the way that I am, right. and I'm good. You know, there. There doesn't always have to be change. That always, there does need to be acceptance. So as people go through whatever their concern is, we would develop an action plan together and help them get toward their goals. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Yay. Thank you so much for your questions. You. Um, I want to toast to you Thank for being you. amazing yes. and, for being <laughs> and for being this week's Bay of the Week. I've never been a Bay of the Week, so I'm happy. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Guys, remember to like, share, and follow, and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Arabia Action. If you have an interest of being a Bay of the Week, all you have to do is email me at interviews at ArabiaAction.com. Again, that's interviews at ArabiaAction.com. And remember to check out part one of this video because you're watching now part two. So, guys, see you again for another episode. Bye.